Have you ever wondered why employers are reluctant to give you feedback after your interview? Stick around because I'm going to tell you why. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff and today I wanna to talk about why employers are so reluctant to give you feedback after an unsuccessful interview. And in fact, it's a suggestion that I even share that you should always try to solicit the recruiter for feedback after you fail an interview so that you can calibrate and hopefully improve. But you might find that the recruiter and or the human resource department is really reluctant to give that feedback and why is that? Well, I'm gonna break it down in this video. I'm gonna share with you a personal story and I'm gonna share with you a very interesting post, so make sure you watch all the way to the end on this one. But before we get too far into it, if you're interested in more career-related content directly from a corporate recruiter, hit that subscribe button. So why are employers so reluctant to give this feedback? First, let's get the elephant out of the room because I know there's a lot of people who are feeling jaded about the interview process, probably rightfully so. There is an element of brokenness to it. I mean, most people say, well, it's because recruiters don't know what they're doing. Human resources is worthless. They don't have any skills and they should be outsourced and can't wait till AI replaces them and all this kind of stuff. I've literally heard every single comment in the book. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, there's probably some degree of truth to the fact that some lack of feedback comes from an unorganized or potentially even lazy recruitment or HR departments where they, they simply forget to give you the information or they don't close that loop with you. And I know that we've all experienced ghosting, myself included. So we know how frustrating that that can be. I made another video about why employers ghost their candidates. So if you're curious about my perspective there, go and check that other video out. I'll leave a link somewhere up here. But nonetheless, there are recruiters and HR professionals who are not organized, don't have a good system in place, and they fail to give candidates any kind of feedback. But with ATS systems and all these sophisticated processes, you would hope that an employer wouldn't forget to send some feedback to an employee if that's their policy to do so. Because there are some employers who have policies that they will give feedback, there's others that won't. Another common reason is that the recruiter or the human resources professional doesn't get that feedback from the hiring team. They're not good with giving notes, they don't give good feedback, maybe the recruiter is not included on the debrief meeting, so they simply don't know. They just get this basic, no, we don't like the candidate. I mean, I've myself have been in situations where hiring managers have just given a base level yes or no to a candidate. And then we go back and try to ask for feedback because not only do I want to give a little bit of feedback to the candidate, but I also like to calibrate on it. So if I'm sending the wrong kind of candidates or targeting the wrong kind of candidates that I can adjust my approach. But that does happen somewhat frequently that a hiring manager is just not forthcoming with a lot of information or the notes that they put in the ATS system after the interview just isn't really robust and we can't really pull anything from it. And there are some companies who do have policies where they will give some feedback. This will usually vary from organization to organization and it might even be from recruiter to recruiter or hiring manager to hiring manager, whether or not they'll actually give feedback or not, because there are a lot of companies that come up with policies at the highest levels that they won't give feedback. And that usually comes from the legal department or high up the food chain in the human resources group. So usually a recruiter is following instructions if that's the case. You should still get some sort of a, a generic rejection letter, which we probably, I mean, let's be real, we all hate getting those things but at least it's some level of closing the loop so that you know where you stand. And the reason my company may have a policy where they don't want any feedback given to a candidate is because they're trying to limit their liability because there have been cases in the past where somebody's given some feedback and the candidate went to the EEOC or got an attorney and then went and ended up suing the company on the basis of some sort of discrimination. So the human resources department, obviously the legal team's department is to limit liability. And they just come out and say, we are just not taking the risk at all. We're just gonna give no feedback or minimal feedback and just close the loop. And that's why you usually see it be consistent from company to company and very generic and kind of above the board, so to speak. From a candidate's perspective, that's not very helpful because you can't ever calibrate. But it's kind of one of those things where a few bad apples have ruined it for everybody. And let me give you a little anecdotal story myself, because this happened to me probably more than once in my career, but one in particular comes to mind. So once I was recruiting a very senior level position for the company that I work for, and there was a slate of five candidates that we were putting through a final interview process. One of the candidates was recently unemployed but he felt very confident in his ability to get this job. In fact, I kind of had a weird interaction with him 
fairly early into the interviewing process, and this was before he even entered into the panel interview, he called me up out of the blue and started asking all these questions about a relocation program, where he would likely need to start looking to live. He wanted to know what realtors he should be using and all of these questions about the kind of compensation he should be expecting and all this stuff. And keep in mind, this is before he even had his panel interview. So he still had a gauntlet of interviews to get through before he would even get to the offer. And out of the slate of five candidates that we were interviewing, I probably would have ranked him maybe fourth or fifth out of five. So the team goes through the interview process and they end up selecting another candidate. And then as I sent out the rejection letters a couple weeks later after the guide already accepted the offer. Sure enough, within one hour, my phone was ringing and it was this guy. So he's asking me, did you make a mistake by sending me this? I think I got this in error. And he was certain he was going to get the job and he thought he had hit it off with the team and he just didn't understand. And could I give him any feedback and why he didn't get selected? He just needed to know. And I proceeded to tell him, you know, you interviewed fine. There was just another candidate who was a little bit better fit with this particular component or this particular skill. And I don't remember exactly what it was, but he then started to say, well, I have that stuff. I didn't sell it enough in the interview because I didn't think that was that important. Then he wanted to share all this information with the hiring manager and he asked for another interview. And I had to tell him, unfortunately, the interviews are closed down. We actually have already gotten an offer accepted by this other candidate. We'll keep you in mind for a future role. So he hangs up on me, all irate and very upset. And probably two hours later, I get this really long email. He's copied me, he's copied the hiring manager, he's copied the people on the interview panel. Basically anybody that he could find email addresses was listed on this email. I mean, you could just sense the rage coming off the paper. He proceeded to tell everybody on the interview panel that they didn't know what they were doing, that we were making a huge mistake and that we didn't know how to hire and all of this stuff. And then at one point he actually accused one of the people in the interview panel of conducting a backdoor reference with his previous boss. And I guess it turns out that the guy had gotten fired from his previous position. And then we're sitting there going, I wonder why. But anyway, he was convinced that somebody on our interview panel had conducted this impromptu backdoor reference and that he was being blacklisted by his previous boss. So he proceeds to tell us that this isn't the last we've heard from him, that he's going to get an attorney involved, that this is age discrimination because I think he was over the age of 60 and all of this stuff. And I sent it over to the legal department because they got involved and they had to send a cease and desist and all of this stuff. And they wanted to pull all of our notes. They wanted to know what we said to him, like all this stuff. It was just this huge mess because this guy could not handle the basic feedback of why he wasn't selected. He had essentially already put himself into that role and he was convinced that he was going to be the one. So those are the kinds of circumstances why employers are so reluctant to give that feedback to begin with, because for every 10 people that would appreciate that interview feedback, you get the one who can't handle it and ruins it for everybody else. And companies just don't want the liability. They kind of just want to do this. So legal teams draft up these basic and generic rejection letters that were instructed to use for all candidates. And that's been the case for just about every single company I've ever recruited for. There is a policy that you cannot give feedback. So that was my extreme example. I'm sure if you talk to any recruiter out there, they'll probably have their own examples. But I wanted to share a story with you because I have a subscriber who sent me an Instagram post of this interaction between a recruiter and I guess one of their confidants. And they were asking about this scenario that they had dealt with that was kind of similar. And I want to walk through the email chain between this recruiter and this candidate so that you can see how the interaction went. But thank you to Nami for sending you this post. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. So I apologize if I'm not, but this perfectly illustrates the point I'm bringing up in this video. So let's take a look at it. So this recruiter is sharing a conversation that she had with a candidate after being rejected for a job that this candidate just interviewed for. So it says, uh, thank you for your interest in social media manager position with XYZ company. While your skills and background are impressive, we decided to move on another candidate. So that's kind of the generic speak. Part of our commitment to transparency as one of the values that we live by, we like to take time out to give candidate feedback when we can. So again, this is a company that has that culture of giving feedback and there's not too many of them. Um, the reason for the rejection is that your resume and job description have no point of intersection. Not tailoring your resume to fit the job description is actually a disservice to yourself uh, because it's not the recruiter or the hiring manager's job to convince themselves that you're a good fit for the role. It is your, your job and the only way you convey it is through your resume. Your resume should tell us how what you have been doing can equip you to do what we are looking to get done not only what you have been doing. You can have the background that is not related to a specific industry or role and still tell us the skills that you've gained that can be transferred and applied to the role we're looking for to fill via your resume. 
then she proceeds to share a couple of links that might have been helpful for her. And then she says, I appreciate your time. We encourage you to look, blah, 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 blah. And then sincerely, the hiring team. So first, my reaction to the note that was sent to the candidate. I think it's all very valid feedback. In fact, this is exactly the advice that I share on this channel. I will say that the advice itself is maybe a little hard hitting. Um, I probably would have softened it a little bit and maybe been a little bit more generic. Um, it, it comes across as being maybe slightly condescending. I would probably have, again, softened the message and just shared with her some high level tips that um, in the future, it might be beneficial to try to link your resume and your background more, more directly to the position that you're applying for, and then basically encourage her to continue to apply for other jobs that she might be a fit for and leave it at that. But that being said, this is actually really valuable feedback that she was given considering the role. And then she shares the resume of this person as a context. And when I look through the resume, it's a financial office assistant. Now, keeping in mind that this is a social media manager role, I think that's what it said in the original, and I'm looking at through this resume, and there's absolutely nothing in here that says that. Um, so I'm sitting here wondering how this person even got an interview to begin with, because I would have resume screened this, and they would have never gotten the first round, uh, just because this resume is, A, the resume is terrible, uh, B, the um, person just is not qualified at all for the role. And this is actually really common when we pu publish a job for social media manager. These are the kind of applications that we'll get. So don't allow a high candidate count number. If you see there's 2,000 candidates that have applied because like 99.9% .9 of them look like this. So if you put together a nice custom resume, it's still worth you doing it. If the candidate really took it to heart, there's actually some really valid feedback in there, however harsh ish it might be. So the response from the candidate was, I find it weird as if this is how you reply to candidates who send their applications by being petty. A well-reputable company like this wouldn't be petty and non-professional when it comes to job applications. You did it the first time and I ignored it, but I won't this time around, which is why I'm giving you this reply. Be gone. <laughs> so it's kind of like this shoe. You could tell she's just completely not listening to the advice that the recruiter gave her. And if you can get beyond like kind of like the pride wall that you've kind of put up, because let's face it, nobody likes being rejected. It's uh, it's a humbling experience, especially for roles that you are maybe interested in. It's kind of, you know, people do that. Um, but if she actually listened to it, uh, listened to that feedback and adjusted her approach, it might actually help her. And she potentially could be a candidate fit in the future, especially if she comes across as being very pleasant in an interview process. A hiring team may like the person, but just not have the right skill match. So they would consider them for maybe another position. But when you send stuff like this, I mean, you're, you're basically just sticking a fork in it. Um, so nonetheless, this is when a candidate gets feedback. This is the kind of stuff that they get. And now is this salacious? Probably not, but it is a little snarky. And as a recruiter, it might dissuade me from sending feedback in the future to the candidate. But my point's proven. This is why companies tend to be very reluctant with giving feedback because you'll get responses that are snarky. You get people that are not happy with it. Um, there are some people that are really gracious and those are the ones that I feel good about, but I have had my fair share of people who have reacted very poorly to it. And it does make you as the recruiter second guess whether or not you really wanna give that deep feedback that will truly help somebody because you know, there's some people that could really use the help and this, this person clearly could use a little guidance. But if you need help, I'm happy to give you feedback. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. I've got a lot of training courses that you can check out for resumes, for interview strategy and all of that stuff. So check out my website. I'll leave links down below for all this stuff. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful. It gives you a little bit of insight from both sides of the fence because I know it can be easy to think that all HR people, all recruiters are just worthless and terrible, but there is two sides to every story. So let's be fair and look at it from both angles. So appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one.